NFTs are by far one of the most misunderstood topics in crypto and Web 3.0. In the wake of the recent crypto downturn, many NFT projects have gotten absolutely decimated, seeing their valuations drop 99% or more. But in the midst of all this, one collection in particular has seen a recent 5x increase, and this could hold clues for a major use case that could bring forward more NFT adoption, and how this could actually rebuild trust in the NFT space and have ripple effects towards broader adoption of crypto technology. So I'm going to shed light on all that in this video and explain everything you need to know as a blockchain developer myself works this technology on a daily basis. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to become a blockchain master, step by step from start to finish, break into the blockchain industry, increase your salary well past 100k, I can show you how to do that over at adaptiveversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, so let's jump into this. So NFTs are definitely a polarizing topic because people typically fall into two schools of thought on NFTs. They either love them and think this is awesome, you see all kinds of potential and you want to buy all these NFTs, or you typically are on the opposite end of the spectrum and you take a way more skeptical approach of like, who really cares about this? Like, wh why, why do I care about a digital picture on the blockchain? Can I just right click save? Now, I understand both these perspectives because if I'm being 100% honest, I've oscillated between these two views in the past. However, for quite some time, I've maintained the idea that crypto collectibles are cool for sure, but I'm really excited about how NFTs expand into bigger use cases beyond that and unlock real utility value. And today, I want to talk about a major player, Starbucks, who's gotten in the NFT space and has launched several successful NFT collections that are kind of flying under most people's radar. And this could hold some bigger clues into why this is working and how more people could adopt this and how it could have a snowball effect in the future. Now, I actually covered Starbucks getting into the NFT space when they launched their uh, Starbucks Odyssey program when it first came out. That was many, many, many months ago. But since that time, they've actually done several NFT drops as a part of this program. And most recently, their Sirens collection sold out really fast back in March. Originally, they had 2,000 unique stamps as a part of this that sold for $100 a piece. And the price quickly rose to $500 a piece on secondary markets. Uh, you know, within a, a month's time as a 5x increase in the middle of a pretty bad crypto downturn and an even worse NFT downturn at a time where many people have completely lost faith in NFTs. And so why is that? Like, what is Starbucks doing here that's actually working? And how could this be actually providing real value to people that could translate to lots of other people doing this in the future? And so I've got some personal thoughts on how this works, but I actually want to bring up a couple of different views that are expressed by Brian Astroff here on his Substack letter. You can definitely go check that out if you want to. So full credit where credit is due on some of his ideas here. So one thing he talks about, and I really agree with this, is the fact that Starbucks has really been an innovator for a long time. I mean, think about it. They basically made the coffee shop experience popular in America. He talks about how Starbucks essentially took the you know coffee shop culture that was really popular, like over in Italy, for example, saw that and then brought it back to the United States and made it like a luxury product and experience. That they've been very innovative in corporate rewards points, like think about the little Starbucks stars that you get maybe on your mobile app, and they were even doing that before we had mobile apps. And speaking of mobile apps, they were one of the first people to really dive into that with mobile payments for Starbucks back in 2011, way before we had things like Apple Pay. And now Starbucks is at the forefront of another new technology, NFTs, and so, what they're doing is working, and with somebody with that kind of track record of early adoption and innovation, I wouldn't really bet against them. And so one of the biggest things that's making this NFT collection work, that's one of the big values that they've talked about, is the digital third place. Okay, Starbucks actually, their, their CMO published a massive article about this uh, on their website uh, about a year ago, but now we're seeing this actually take place with the, with the Odyssey program. So what is the digital third place? Well, it really is connected to Starbucks ethos. So, you know, like I was saying before, Starbucks essentially saw like the coffee culture that was happening in places like Italy and then brought that back to the United States and made it a popular luxury thing. And part of that culture is a culture of community and connection. So like you go to coffee shops and maybe hang out with other people, you talk to them, you have your coffee, and this connectedness is part of what makes that work for the, the customers, but then also the customers to the brand itself. Starbucks works very hard to craft an identity and an ethos that resonates with their customer that makes them feel like they belong there. And all that sort of takes place in this physical location of the Starbucks location. Now, creating the digital third place is 
kind of like taking some of these same core values and copying them to the online experience. So basically in their own words, they're talking about the rewards program with Starbucks Odyssey is a Web3 based experience that will bridge the physical and digital customer experience. So through Starbucks Odyssey, customers will unlock the new generation of experiential benefits, both digitally and in person, and become part of a digital community built upon a human connection. And that the NFTs themselves are the core thing that facilitate this human connection. Because essentially when you buy the NFTs, you have actual ownership over that connection and you get real benefits with that and you're connected to other people, the part of the community who hold that. Now, you might hear this whole like digital third place thing and instantly put your skeptic hat on and say, that just sounds like complete BS. But I would challenge you on that a little bit. So part of the reason you might think that, you might be thinking like, who really cares? Like, who's going to want to own this stuff? Or who actually cares about the connection to a big corporate brand like this? So uh, here's the counter argument that I would say. Think about social media, okay? Go to Starbucks Instagram. They have 18 million followers. Now, a lot more people than 18 million people drink Starbucks coffee every single day. And I don't know what Starbucks customer base is, but it's probably at least many multiples of that, okay? But obviously, like, 18 million people saw some value in following Starbucks on Instagram and continue to do so and keep getting their updates and haven't unclicked the unfollow button, okay? And so part of the skepticism is you might be thinking, I don't want to do this, therefore nobody else wants to. But clearly 18 million people want to follow Starbucks on Instagram. 873,000 people follow brands like Doritos on Twitter. And so this is a valuable piece of digital real estate for a company like Starbucks because they get 18 million eyeballs on their posts every single day on one social platform. And 18 million people just consented to click the follow button because they get value out of this and have not unfollowed them. And so similarly, like on the Starbucks Siren collection like I was talking about before, um, you know, 1,000 people, much smaller number, um, own these things, but the entire collection is worth a million dollars. Now, this is just beginning. This is small potatoes in terms of like Starbucks just having something that's worth a million dollars. They have lots of things that are worth way more than a million dollars. This is just the beginning. These are the seeds of something that can be much, much bigger. And so go back to the social media thing that I was talking about a minute ago. That's kind of a good analogy for this because you might not care about following brands on social media, but clearly it's providing value to other people. Clearly it's providing value to the brands. This is a similar type of thing. You may not get it because you might think, I don't want to own these NFTs. I don't care about the other use cases like getting special rewards or experiences or getting to go to like a coffee farm or something like that. But there's clearly lots of people that you can verify and chain that are going to do this and are getting value of it. And I'm here to tell you right now, again, Starbucks is not a brand that cares about dropping nfts just to make like a million dollars they're not making a million dollars off the drop they're get appreciated that much off the secondary market they don't want to take some massive reputational risk to do this just to make a couple million dollars they, they're, they're, their sites are set on way bigger things than that and so for that reason this is the beginning of something that can get much much bigger and they could be a very early adopter of the space to watch this trend grow over the coming you know, years, two, three, five, ten years from now, just like they did with mobile payments back in 2011. I mean, I get on the Starbucks app all the time and order stuff now, you know, basically 10 years and change later. Now, let's also talk about why now is such a critical time for this. So again, we're way down in the bottom of this crypto downturn, and it's been a pretty bad NFT downturn as well. And, you know, Starbucks is launching this at a time where they can be an early adopter of this, just like I was talking about mobile payments a minute ago, where they can really ride that wave up over time. But they can also do this at a time when they can kind of restore faith in this asset class from a lot of people who have gotten completely burned by the NFT downturn that happened over the past couple of years, okay? And this can kind of be a self-fulfilling prophecy where if they have the resources to like make this take off and then they have all this ownership over this trend early, they can help increase their own value of the thing that they've done by proving out this business model and getting other people on the bandwagon so it's more normal for consumers to participate in this kind of behavior. And they can be at the tip of that wave as it really crests in the coming years and win big time off of this. Okay, so that's an overview of how Starbucks is using NFTs to integrate with their brand. Again, they have a strong reputation of being early to these trends. They see some pretty big sellouts with their NFTs recently and I think that's because they're onto something in a way like brands were early to social media whenever that first came out. And just like Starbucks has been early with other things like mobile payments, I wouldn't exactly bet against them in this case. And for that reason, I think we could also see lots of other people jump on this bandwagon over time to where this becomes a more normal consumer experience. So I hope you like this video. As always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. 
subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Definitely helps these videos out so the more people learn about blockchain. And if you're as fascinated with this technology as I am, you want to get your hands dirty, how can you get started today? Well, you can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find my free courses there. They like you to me courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those and you want to take the next step, or hey, maybe you want to take a master's shortcut entirely, I actually have become a blockchain master step by step start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.